Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, please. Tell me this is working. Please tell me you're getting audio. Please tell me you can you can hear me. I, I really hope this is working. I'm so sick of dealing with YouTube and OBS today. I, I, I've been trying so many times to get this going, and of course the loop thing went a little too far. Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Getting audio. Okay, sounds like there's audio coming through. All right. Now here's the thing. Is there going to be audio when I show you this? No? No. Is there no audio when I show you this? Oh, this is going to be great because this is the die cut cover for Spider-Man 1. And this is what I wanted to show. This is what I've been trying to do this entire time. So hopefully the sound's coming through okay. Oh, the music is still there. Why is the music still there? Is there no audio when I show you this? Oh, this is going to be great because this is... Because, okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just going to try to keep going because I don't want that background music behind the Picasso thing. And, and it's really... OBS is being really weird when I play a video. Like, I wanted the intro video to have some music. And, and, and I've also had problems with my lips not syncing to the audio. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this has been fixed yet. I don't know if... Whatever. Anyway, this is what we're doing. This is, this is the cover. J.J. Abrams. He and his son are doing, uh, of course, Spider-Man number one. And anybody who's a big fan of Spider-Man knows this. It was announced at San Diego Comic-Con. They've made this new die-cut cover. And the way it works is they're putting a hard cardboard cover, and the eye is actually cut out here. Um, and so uh, basically what's going to happen is you've got this big hole where the eye is, and when you flip it open, this is what you get. Henry Abrams, he gets top billing. J.J. Abrams, and then Sarah Pacelli. And this is it. Now, this is their die-cut cover, and they said this is the Chip Kid variant, and they said they want to make it look homemade to make it look like something like Peter when he designed his suit, what his suit, um, you know, had that homemade look to it, the way he first, you know, cobbled a bunch of stuff together. So they wanted it to have this kind of graffiti, home craft look to it, which, I mean, I got to say, it's, it's kind of plain. Not really a whole lot to it. Or there's the regular cover. And this one is the Oliver Copeel, I think is how you pronounce it. This is the regular one. You can see that Spider-Man logo they've used a lot over the last few years. I was hoping they'd come up with something new, but apparently not. They're just going to reuse that one with uh, Red Eye Sam Fisher in the back. or I don't know. Is that the dude from Event Leviathan? Regardless. Um, this, this cover, this regular one is going to be $4.99 because it's going to be oversized, have some extra pages. And this die cut one is also going to be $4.99, which means you should be able to pick up this variant without paying any extra. Now, the question is going to come down to, is your store going to sell it to you at regular price or is your store going to charge a premium? And that can be an issue. That can be what, you know, messes this whole thing up because a lot of retailers, they get a variant they're going to throw an extra buck on it. It's a way to make some extra money, and most people don't really mind paying for it, I guess, a lot of times, especially if it's taken care of. It's in a bag and board, uh, so you know it's going to be a good uh, you know, quality taken care of. But the kicker on this particular uh, variant, if you really want it, call your local comic shop right now. Tell them you want it. Tell them you'll be in first thing in the morning, and you're going to prepay for it. And the reason why you want to prepay, order it now and prepay, is because orders have to be in by 10 a.m. tomorrow to be finalized for this book. Now, if it's not in by 10 a.m. tomorrow, then it's kind of up in the air. What they're going to do is they're going to overprint a, a little bit. So what they're going to do is they're going to pick a certain percentage they're going to guess at how many extra orders may come in. They're going to print extra copies in the hopes that they can cover that amount. But let's say your local store, they just as a placeholder, they're like, yeah, five copies, whatever, because they didn't know what it was. Now they announce, hey, it's going to be this die cut cover, same price. And tomorrow at lunchtime, they go, oh, right, I need to update those orders. And they change it from five to 25. Well, now, you know, think that's a huge percentage jump from 5% to 25% or five copies, the 25 copies, that's a huge percentage, it, and it's, you know, 20, 20%, right, uh, was the 5% of 25, so 
basically what this means is that hopefully Marvel is overprinting enough to cover those extra 20 copies that they're adding on. And what's going to happen is if every store does this where they have a smaller number and then after the deadline they decide, oh crap, I need to add a whole bunch of copies, uh, well then there's not going to be enough copies to go around. So they may order 25 tomorrow at lunch, but what they actually might get in is seven. They get their original five and then a couple extra from that overprinting uh, percentage that Marvel will do. Now, usually it's not quite that bad of a deal. It's not quite as low as saying, I want five, and then you change it to 25, and then you get seven. Um, they, you know, it's kind of hard to gauge these things when they overprint, but generally, if you put five, if, if you normally print, uh, you know, order, let's say, 15 copies, you put five as a placeholder because you're ordering some of the other cover. Uh, and then you're like, oh, everybody wants to switch over to this one. And so th they look a lot of times at those numbers. How many copies do they usually get? How many have they ordered of the other covers? You know, they can do some of that number crunching. And it may not be so bad. You know, you may get, instead of getting 25, you may get the 15 like you normally get, you know. Uh, but that's one of those things that they have to figure out because some store owners, um, you know, aren't, um, you know, savvy with keeping up with that. And they don't really you know, keep track of this stuff. So, so Dusty the Maverick, I see you in the chat room, you're saying you already asked for the kid cover. That's great. But I might suggest go ahead and pay for it. Go into the store, give them the extra money. Um, that way it's, it's paid for and it's cemented in as part of your subscription. And then that way, you know, you don't get this nasty surprise down the road where they go, well, we only got in, you know, seven copies. Cause if they only get in seven copies, then you're prepaid you should automatically be one of those. So anyway, all right, again, doing a lot of these streams, trying to get all this stuff. I hope we got the audio issues fixed, at least the delay fixed. Um, I know we tried to do the stream a minute ago. There was no audio at all coming from me, but I guess the video is played and I want it to be the opposite. I want the video at the beginning to play, but when I show you this in Picasa, I don't want that background music playing, so maybe that's going to take some extra tweaking on my part. But anyway, uh, um, you know, I think this cover's okay. I mean, is the die cut? It's kind of neat that they'll they'll do something like that. But I don't know. Honestly, if I was picking it up off the shelf, I might just go ahead and get grab this one. Um, just as a, I, I like the artwork better than having this. Now, now one thing I noticed is that the Spider-Man logo on this one looks like the old Todd McFarlane Spider-Man, whereas this one is this Spider-Man logo that we've seen a lot over the last few years. And, and you can see that on this particular piece of artwork, there's no issue number, there's no credits, there's no barcode, uh, none of that kind of stuff on there. So I wonder if this actual logo, the old Todd McFarlane Spider-Man logo that's been revived here on this cover may actually end up replacing it on this cover. So that is also something to keep in mind with that as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this all works. Hopefully you like watching some of these, you know, shorter, quick live videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.